Okay, so today's tutorial, I hope you already have seen some of this stream resource code, but I'm just, we're going to see with also how you can investigate the stream resource code to your advantage. I'm going to point some points uh, and leave the rest to you also to discover more than what will be being said here. So let me just uh, share the, uh, my screen. Confirm with the reaction if you see my screen. Okay, thank you. So this is a stream big source code which you can clone here if if you want to test it on your local machine. Just clone this one. Uh, since I already cloned it, I'm just going to go to my base code. This is a cloned stream big code. So uh, we're going to focus on the Python code specifically. Uh, so we're going to see under the lib, the stream lead folder. We're going to see the codes there. Uh, yeah, probably uh, on the morning has ensured most of the points, but I'm going to add some additional things. Uh, if you want to discover other uh, the codes other than the Python code that are found on the stream lead folder under the lib directory, you can go ahead and Discover there's no limit, but we're gonna focus on this tutorial on this particular folder, the stream lead folder under under the lib directory. So let's just see first from how it's structured the folder, how it's structured. So if you see it, uh, it is by now I would say you are comfortable in how you can structure your projects. You have to here, if you can see it, all the commands that are used on the stream record are gathered in same in one folder, the components in one folder, the connections in one folder, the elements. So this is the best way you, can, you should structure your uh, code, which in the previous project, you also see the notebooks are gathered in one, the utils in one, in one particular folder, which is a best practice for any other developer or any other person who is checking out your uh, work can easily understand the flow of your work. So you, you start from seeing how they structure their code. That's how you start investigating the stream resource code, seeing the structure, how it's made. Now let's just go right into the modules they are using. So if you see this module, for example, it's entirely a Python code. So what are, when you investigate their source code, start from the beginning. So here you can see there's a documentation, a comment that indicating they are the owner of this code. Right now, you don't have to worry about that. But in the future, when you are developing or you are an entrepreneur, develop your own application and you have ownership to that, you have to put this kind of licensing that you are the owner to that application or each code that are found in that uh, application by writing this. It's, it's a common practice. Uh, big companies who have the source code for their website and everything like that, they put this kind of copyright uh, indication that they own it. It's just for the feature. But for now, let's just move to the code. So start from the here. Is that a question? Uh, yes, hi. Uh, did you open a file or did you open a script? Uh, I don't uh, script. Yeah, I have cloned this one which you find on the documentation, the stream resource code. So the Should source code structure comes already in place um, there. So. Yeah, I cloned this one and this is their source code. I haven't changed anything. This is a stream resource code that you find on the GitHub, this one. This okay. one, you know this one, right? So I've already shared on the documentation of this week. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so here is the, 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 the source code under the lead folder. I am on the stream lead folder. If you go to the lead then stream lead folder, you can find this structure. So I am showing you this one. Okay, where are we okay, in this module? So start from the imports. What are the new things that you haven't used before or things that have new to you. For example, have you used typing of Python before? If you haven't researched on that one, 
what is doing on this particular module or on this string source code. How, that's how you should investigate every new thing that you see. And if you see that this imports, uh, there is this dot is used to indicate there is a directory next one to another and to another, right? So uh, import can be either you import a package that you install or it could be an import of a folder from another folder. So here you can see, for example, under Streamlit, in this case, it's uh, importing a folder. So if you go to the Streamlit, which is this one, and on the runtime folder, and under the script runner, which you can find. So this, this don't indicate that. It's showing a directory where some function or whatever you are importing is found. That is the purpose of, if you haven't used this kind of dot, especially for those beginners, this is what it does. This is how you should see the stream before to see a new thing and use it for your advantage. So if you see here, these are two functions. So under the script runner, you don't see these functions right away. There are modules here. But what is the functionality that I mean I can find this rerun data function in one of these modules and import that module and then import the function. I can do that, but what you can see is I can can make or oh, it can let me just show you what I'm trying to say here. Let's say the rerun data function is found under the catch module. So you can put here again it will automatically this will detect all the modules in the function catch and then uh, import the function and I can do the same for the next one as well. For this one, let's say it's, it's another module is found a different module. For example, there is another module request. Let's see here. So if you see it, I can import these two functions if they are found in different modules like this one, or in one line, of course, by only importing the particular folder, the Python by default will detect the function names, whatever each module you are. This is the best practice. This one is the best practice. Instead of running two lines, which takes up memory from your machine and your application, it's just add up here the size of your code, which is not advisable to have. You can use this Python functionality by using one line of code. You can access any function from any modules that is existed here. You don't have to explicitly mention each module. So this is one functionality you can see from this source code that you can use for your advantage like this typings we will see it there typings are not, it's not a package that you install but by default you can access python typings uh, there are a lot of typings these are just the two typings that are used in this particular module but there are tons which you will see here everywhere typings what are their purpose we will see which we can see here as well final what does the typing uh, final in Python means. In this case, Python, if you also even hover on the variable, you can see it's showing you it's a constant variable. The final is short, telling you this logger variable is constant, which means the this getter longer, the logger value is the value of this variable. The typing means constant. It's indicating this value cannot be changed. Now, I, I cannot change the logger function to another value because I already initialized it as a final, the final value of logger in this entire module is this function, so it cannot be changed. This is one, one type of type that you can use to indicate your variables uh, types, or you can use others. There's a string, int, there are different typings of Python that you can use just to indicate for someone or for someone who reading your code, this variable is a final. So when I'm reading out, um, this is this is someone else's code, right? When I'm seeing this code, I automatically understand this logger function is a constant value that cannot be changed. This is how anyone who reading your code should understand what you are doing easily. So typing is the purpose of typing is that just indicating what it can do also. There is also another way you can use typing here also. You see, for example, this function 
how they write their function, if you see it. Uh, by default, we can understand there is a fish parameter that will be passed on this function. But I'm also giving it a typing of string. I'm saying the parameter that is going to be passed on this switch page function has to be straight, a string. So if I pass it an int or a float or anything, I know it will not work. So this is an indication what the parameter type is. And if you put an arrow after the function naming and put some kind of type, this is also another typing which you are indicating this function has no any return value. Uh, if, you have, if it has an, an int interview, you put an int, but if it doesn't have, you put it like this. So anyone who's reading a function, it's the best way to write a function. So making sure the parameters, what kind of parameter one should pass. So one doesn't have to run your function to see what to export from the function. By giving this kind of hints all over your function, you are you are making your code more readable, more professional, and more putting yourself in a advanced level by indicating what your code does uh, for a reader. So I can easily understand this function accepting a page parameter, which is a string, and it's not returning anything. If it's returning, the typing would be different. So these are the purpose of typing in Python, which are very useful to have. And what else you can notice from this Python module would be this thing. You see here, this one, these templates. It's found in every function. It's a documentation. It's indicating the purpose of the function. One also can see this template here, the uh, comment the documents you put here and understand what the function does. It's also a best practice to put in this detailed comments on your function to indicate what it's doing, what parameter it accepts, what's written or not, things like that. So this is another point you can find uh, from a Python module in Streamlit. Uh, if you see in every function, there is something like this one you will see it all over the streaming source code like this one this is called decorators on the top of the function using the add symbol if something is put that's a decorator investigate what decorators are in python it's a broad concept the decorator in python it's a, a useful concept in python so go to google or if you have chat gpt go there and understand what decorator means for python Decorators can be a built-in decorator. The, the built-in decorators you found automatically by using Python. And there are also custom decorators that you can create for your function. So if you see this gather matrix uh, here, almost all of them are custom decorators. They are developed by the whoever writes the Streamlit code. The Streamlit code, the developer, whoever they are, they are the one who create this decorator for their function. So how you will know it's a custom decorator if you click here go to definition you can find the gather matrix function in one of the modules inside the stream code uh, in just accessing this gather matrix function that has been defined somewhere here as a decorator in this mo module in this execution control module so the usage of decorator is vast which i recommend you to investigate to research and understand and you will understand why it's used like this here in the stream code so this is uh, again another point that we see from the stream read code so what else if there's anything new that you don't know make sure you research it understand it uh, if you can also run this code maybe just copy this one in some in your own uh, Python module and give it for a if it accepts a parameter or not, just pass it a mock or a fake data and see what kind of output it gives. Uh, if you are using JGPT, it will give you line by line definition of what each code is doing. So uh, it will be easier to understand any new thing you see, make sure you analyze it or investigate it. Uh, so I think we see almost a lot of points here in this single module. So let's just go to another module. Maybe if you can see another different feature. Again, typing would be used if, you, if this is uh, actually this is uh, a file that has been imported from 
here. So if we want to see a particular file, if it's found in this stream source code, you don't have to go where is your you LLIB folder. You don't have to do that. Just click here and use the advantage of base code editor and just click auto definition. It will directly, directly uh, redirect you to the particular function or anything. So you use this basic code use case for your advantage to discuss, to look over the codes, which make a lot of things easier for you to look over. So there's a lot of things. Anything you see here, it's also typing, it's just telling you there is a dictionary typing. Uh, the types inside the dictionary, there's a string, there's a list, there is strings that will be put. When typings are put it like with this or sign, this um, straight slash sign, it indicates a unit. It can be either a list or it can be either a string. It's, uh, we, it's, it's named a union typing, which you are saying. You, one thing can be this type or this type. If you have that kind of typing that you want to mention, you use this sign and it will be optional. The typing of that parameter will be optional. So typing is really everywhere on the source code. I'm going to give you that uh, to expand and look up on. Uh, here, one new thing we can see is there's a try except. Uh, if you are familiar with JavaScript or any framework with JavaScript, it's the, in, the, in those frameworks, try catch is used. So you try catch as name uh, on in Python. We use try except in JavaScript. We use try catch, but let's just stick on Python. And when you use try except, it's just a error handling mechanism, right? When you want, when you are indicating there is functions that you want to run, you will put on the try the function that you want the methods that you want to run. But if it doesn't work, if it's some kind of error that might happen on the function, the except will catch will. Uh, catch that error and display it to you in some uh, organized way that this function has been rejected or reversed because of this restraint. And so how you write your error handling is up to you, but this is how the stream leads write their error handling, which you, which you should also uh, look over error handling mechanisms. And it's an important thing, it's almost a default thing that you put on your functions. Almost every function has error handling mechanism. It should have an error handling mechanism. So discover the streaming error handling mechanism as well. Uh, also, if we go back to the first module, there's something that I missed. There's a login there. I don't know how much you know about logging, but in Python, uh, if you win some kind of error or warning or anything that indicates the developer that something is going on on the platform, on the application, they displayed it in Python mostly with logging, the package that you can install and use it. Uh, when you install the logging package, you can access every logging functionality through the package and it will help you to display errors when a function fails to run and stuff like that. So in the streaming source code, how they use logging is a bit different. So you can also discover that. So for example, if you see here the logger, let's just go to the definition part. There, they have created their own logger.py and they have created their own structure to access this logging uh, meters that are found in the package with critical error where it's just are, as their name suggested, when some kind of function, you can give you the, a level for your error that would be put in every function. So if maybe the level, which level you want to give you the function when something goes wrong, depend on how you write the function, but you can discover the stream resource code, how they did their logging uh, by this understanding this logger.py function, uh, which they access everywhere in their module. They access it, they import the logger function from here, and they use the logging everywhere. Logging, typing, decorators are used everywhere on their notebook, on their module, Python modules. So I would also give you uh, a hint to also discover those 
things in depth and understand it and uh, take any point that can be useful for you to use in your project, in not, not only this week's project, for lifetime, as long as you are deciding, as long as you are uh, on that path that you want to be a developer, these points are important as for Python. Okay. Or, so we're not going to go over every uh, module, but most of them have the same kind of usage. This the point that I mentioned till now has been implemented in everywhere. So if I if there's a new thing that I didn't mention, make sure you see them and use this for your advantage. So if, if you can see, every function has this kind of structure. Uh, typing is created, what kind of return should we expect from that function is created. So this is a best practice you should implement when you initialize your function, class, how they accessing class, class in the stream resource code, look up on that, how you can access it, or how they are using it class for their advantage as well. Uh, what else is there? It's similar, so uh, I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm just gonna give when you come to Python. I think I touched most of the big points, but there are, I'm sure there are also a lot of points that you haven't used, uh, functionality of Python you haven't used. So please make sure to go over everything until you get what you want from the source code for your advantage. So uh, there is this Halo folder uh, on the Streamlit source code. It's just the Streamlit built in. Uh, so when you run Streamlit, if you remember on week zero, uh, the first thing that will, the default uh, page that will run on your uh, local host you already is the hello Streamlit, right? If you remember. So this is the default. This is their default. This is the first thing that you see when you run your Streamlit and run for the first time without changing. So this is the code. Uh, this is the menus that are by default running. So if you can, if you want to manipulate and see the difference, I mean, you can see here, for example, on this one, you can see this uh, Streamlit decorator. I mean, this decorator can only be used on the Streamlit framework. It's not a Python decorator. But for your Streamlit application and the future that you build for your dashboard, you can see anything new that you can use for your advantage on your Streamlit application. So if you don't know this catch data decorator, comment this one and see if you see the difference, what difference does it make on the application and if there's a difference, why is that difference is happening, go to the Streamlit documentation and the Streamlit has its own uh, decorators like this one, what they can do for you, make sure you uh, discover that or you investigate that. So I'm just going to show you here to, if you want to run this hello folder, just go uh, to the hello directory and like any other stream this application, run this hello.py. This is the default hello workload. But from the source code, you can uh, edit these codes to, to see what is different or not. By, if you want to comment this one and run it, you can see the difference of what it can do just uh, if you want to discover the stream report, you can use this. Uh, you can run it and see the difference. Uh, the hello.py will not, if I change something here, if I change something here, a, for example, this the demo and run it, you will not see the change because it, since it's a built in application, the stream, you, you changing it will not change it there, but you can just create a new Python module. Let's just do let's say home py. It's just how they structure their code. They will not need to edit their home page, their hello page. So, but if you want to just play with it, you can just copy in another module and run this home py module and see the difference. It says everything that you see in each streamlit application. If there's anything new that you think you might use, uh, do that. The whole load of PY is the only one that will not work for you when you make changes on that particular the built in file of theirs. But you can create a new one, copy the change, and see by running the same 
a lot of PY and I will run home with PY, whatever name that you give your module. It's just a hint, a hint because I run it. It's something that I noticed. I'm just sharing you, but you can now I can manipulate it and see the change as much as I want. Okay. So you can also see the stream the changes if you there's any. So uh, I think this is about it. Uh, the thing that I want to show you discover everything here, for example, in the connections folder, every connection. These are Snowflake, Snowpark, S Square. This has external tools that Streamlit is connected to. So how it makes the connection with external tools, you can again go over each functionality and see how it does that. And as you can see, all connections are from the same folder. So any developers can easily understand this code well. The code is well written. It's professionally written. It's, um, it's an advanced level writing. So if you can manage to write like stream leads, uh, if you can take keywords uh, that you can use, key points that you can use on your code and write like this, you are immediately going to be in advanced level when you come to code writing. So your code needs to be readable. Most of the time, your code will be uh, read by other developers especially in the future when you work with teams, other developers has to be able to read your code to work with you. So it's just a best practice to understand how you should write and streamlit source code is the best example on how you should do that regarding Python programming language. And so um, if you have any question, you can throw or anything that I mentioned that you want me to repeat, I will repeat it. Okay. Is it clear how I try to investigate each module? Maybe you can give a reaction if that's clear. Right. So I'm going to take everyone is ready now to investigate the stream rate code. Or if you have a question, which you can go ahead and ask. Or oh, you're fast to catch up. OK, uh, maybe you can. Uh, okay. Abraham, go ahead with your question. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, how are we going to make it installable uh, via via the IP function? And mm -hmm. what about the do? Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't. Could you repeat your question, oh. Abraham? Okay, how can we make it installable the function, the module? Mm -hmm. You mean the GitHub the stream resource code? Yes, yes, on our challenge document. No, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to build your weak challenge project on the stream resource code. Just whatever you think is useful from the stream resource code, you can take it on your uh, on your own code that you have. Maybe you might use the last week starter code for this week as well. But you can add any functionalities that you, you see on the Streamlit code to yourself. You don't have to install the Streamlit code and build another component on it. No, no. I, I meant how can we make our modules installable via the IP install? Like, uh, I was wondering you could show it us on the Streamlit uh, module. If that's possible. Uh, installable, you mean after you deployed it? Is that why you're asking? Uh, I think I should write it down on the message. Okay, uh, write it down. Okay, Getacho, uh, you're saying I'm a bit fast. Maybe you can tell me wait, you lost my presentation and I can repeat it.
maybe write that down when you last my presentation and i will repeat it again a bit slow now uh, but to answer your second question should we go over all the modules in the Striblet folder yes if you can go through everything to see if there's anything new that you can use uh, try to run it or it, you don't have to run every function actually but if it, there's any keywords that you don't know search it on the internet and see if you can understand it if you can go over all the modules is that clear uh, getacho or uh, for jabis can you explain about the logger function okay. so logging in python which you can right now also search on the internet logging the logging purpose in python it's a package it will give you some kind of uh, way to to display your errors for example if your function is not working as it should you can give it like a, a try it's, uh, you can give it a condition if this doesn't work uh, display this logger functionality so logger functionality if we open it here open the logger.py The local package has these methods, the critical, the error, the warning, the info, the debug. So when you uh, write logger the critical and write some message, when some error happens in the function, it will uh, throw or it will throw the logging.critical function. How you write it depends on, on your how you how you wrote your logging, but it's just like a print you see print you write print something right it's, it's the same as as print but in some advanced way so if something has happened to the error you can say print something so you can see the print on your machine here on your logger machine or if you're using notebook you can see the print writing down so this the logger is same concept as print but it's in a uh, in more advanced way in more advanced way to give you different uh, logging meters that are mentioned here to display your errors or if there's an info you want to display when some hap when something happened on your function you can ac uh, access logging dot logging dot info and write some information on that uh, logging function or if there's a warning that you want to throw again you can use the warning method of logging package and logging dot warning and you write some message on the warning it's like print you are writing a message that the meters or the events that you are trigger triggering when something happens are different using logging function so if you go to the package of logging you can directly access this function logging of logging dot logging dot that is the basic way to do that but the stream lead has also uh, created their own custom way of writing the logging other than you are just directly using the package methods when you insert the package you can directly access this this once you don't have to write this particular structure but the stream resource code they have created their own custom way of displaying the message where something when something happened on their application when some functional function is executed and something happened these events, uh, the, some events are triggered in those events. It doesn't have to be an event, but just the way how you wrote it is up to you, but you can display this kind of logging to show some kind of error or some kind of information or some kind of warning for your functionality based on your needs. So what different uh, what different in the stream record is, they have right custom functions to access those loggings in their applications which you can uh, go ahead and discover how they make the connection to access the login package on their modules hope that clear Jarvis. can we make our python project installable PIP. okay 
So that would be another tutorial, Abraham. Yeah, I think I get your question now. So you have to deploy it first in the right way to make it installable with PIP. So that's another topic, another tutorial, uh, which you can definitely find sources on the YouTube also. The, your Python project first has to be uh, deployed with PIMP to be installed by PIMP. PIMP, no, PIMP, sorry. Okay, any other question? Okay, last confirmation. Now you are have at least some basics to go ahead and discover the stream leads source code. Uh, or mention on the chat what new things that you have learned from this tutorial. For example, I say typing in Python. Or raise your hand or type it on decorators. Nice. Logger, great. Corridors, typing, logging. Um, I mentioned some other things also. Importing modules, right? In one line. How you write your function, error handling, right? Javis. Function writing, the way the functions are writing, if you see them, they are very important to include on your projects. What to expect from parameters, what kind of types, the return of a function. Yeah. And there's also one thing that I forgot to mention, exception. Here, if you see this underscore, it's not underscore in Python has different meanings. Uh, I'm gonna give you also, a hint on that one, read on that. What does underscore mean in Python? Uh, you can use underscore for naming purpose, but underscore are also used for other purposes in Python language. So discover also that underscore in Python. It has different meaning. Yeah, documentation. Nice, meet, Michael. Okay, underscores. I think you have a good base now to copyright, yeah. It means most of you have heard the tutorial and there could be other new points that I haven't mentioned. I'm gonna give you this as a starter to go over the stream resource code and just give me final confirmation. You are ready to go over each thing. Thank you. As I said, if you have any questions, you can reach out on the Slack. I think we can finish the tutorial here. So thank you for joining in. Uh, sorry for those of you who have speak too fast. <laughs>